It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game has been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, it's been a long time since, since I said that, so yeah, we're not going to go with uh, Canelo exposed by Bivol. That that uh, whole charade is over, but I had fun doing it. Make sure you get your Canelo exposed by Bivol t-shirts. I got to At this point, we got to be ourselves. We got to be the Untouchable got to continuously cover that boxing but listen man i wanted to talk about this uh jean pascal fight because for those that know for those that didn't know jean pascal had his first fight in damn near three years since uh, the last time we saw him he fought Badu jack back in um december of 2019 so look it's been a long time since, since, since we've seen jean pascal you know jean pascal uh one of the best light heavyweights of his time, one of the better light heavyweights of his time. You know, he, he's been in there with the who's who of boxing from guys like obviously, you know, um, Lucien Butte, Dimitri Bivol, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Sergey Kovalev, Unies Gonzalez, Elliot Alvarez, Marcus Brown, Badu Jack, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, guess what? He had a, 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 a strong, stiff challenge tonight in the Chinese contender, the undefeated Chinese Southpaw contender, you know, Fang Long Meng. And, Meng, um, good fighter, you know, has some good attributes, tall, long, rangy, southpaw, good jab, nice, compact, straight left hand. So this was a fight that on paper I was very interested in and I, I, was, so, I was so intrigued by it that I decided to actually buy the Pro Box uh, TV app. For those that don't know, Pro Box Promotions is a new boxing entity slash promotional company. Uh, they got guys like uh, uh, Paulie Malignaggi, Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones Jr., Juan Manuel Marquez, all involved on the commentating side. And uh, yeah, they're doing a great thing, giving fans really good fights, value for money. Uh, it's a dollar ninety nine per month and eighteen dollars for the whole year, and you get quality fights. They're, they're going to be doing about like two or three shows every month, so definitely worth uh, the money, I think. Probably the best value you can get in boxing right now. But um, this is a this is a, a good fight. You know, early on, Feng Long Meng got off to a very good start out that southpaw jab, uh, out that southpaw stance, using that jab and, and landing that straight, straight left hand. He had a lot of success in the first three rounds because I think Pascal was uh, very taken aback by the, you know, just fundamentals and the range and being that this guy is taller. Also factoring that Pascal had some ring rust and I think that may have played a bit of a role too as far as his timing with him being older, being a guy that even in his prime was someone that relied more on his uh, on his uh, athleticism more so than his fundamentals. Uh, the first couple rounds were very tough for Pascal. You know, uh, he was hurt in the third round. Uh, Mang buckled him, but but Pascal showed the ability to survive. So um, yeah, that that wound up happening. And I told my dad after the, I told my dad after he got hurt after Pascal got hurt, I said, "Pops, if Pascal gets." to the sixth round or more, he's going to put a beating on this dude. And I was actually, I was right, but it happened a little bit earlier than I thought. You go to rounds like five and six and Pascal, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a gunslinger. You know, the guy's throwing punches from here and here and he's got all kinds of interesting setups to, to, to land these big punches. And he started really going to that body, banging on that body of, uh, of Meng, taking that gas out of the proverbial tank of his. And he made it a rough tough fight a uh, uh, me and potatoes bring your lunch pail you know just war of attrition um a fight where I, a fight in which i don't think meng was fully prepared for because that's not meng style meng is more of a, a a classic boxer stay on the outside use your range he's not really the kind of guy really the kind of guy that relies on physical strength and if he even if he was he wasn't gonna have more than pascal because that's pascal's fight so pascal starts beating this dude up nice and slow throughout the rounds um, starts landing that 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 wild overhand right. Uh, starts landing a nice straight right hand to the body, uh, banging with the left the hook to the body. I mean, all kinds of different punches were landing on, on Meng's body. Um, and the more this fight progressed, the more you could see Pascal getting better and better and stronger and stronger as the fight went on. Um, in round nine, uh, Pascal wound up scoring a knockdown because I think uh, he threw a right hand. Right, he threw he threw a right hand. It didn't land, but the impact of the right hand on the glove, it kind of knocked him off balance and the feet got tangled up. The referee counted as a knockdown around nine. So that was a very much you need a 10-8 round for Pascal. And yeah, he uh in the 12th round, uh the last like 10-15 seconds, he had he had Meng hurt 
out on his feet. Damn near got him out of there. So just a very, very great workmanlike performance from Jean Pascal. You know, I, I don't think this guy has been getting enough credit um, for what he's been doing towards the end of his career. I mean, if you look at Pascal, right? Pascal, you know, five years ago in what was considered to be Pascal's last fight at that time, because people were saying that after the Ahmed El Bialy fight in, in, Dece in uh, December of 2017, that was going to be Pascal's last fight. Um, you know, at that time, El Bialy was a young, undefeated prospect for PBC that they had big plans for. He fought El Bialy right here in his backyard here in South Florida, and he wound up beating him up um, and stopping him in the sixth round. So he was an undefeated guy back then. He beat him. He does the same thing again. He, he did the same thing uh, two years later when he fought Marcus Brown, beating him up, right? So that, And now you got Fang Long Meng. So you're talking about in the last five years, uh, from 2017 to 2022, Pascal has fought three undefeated fighters. He stopped two of them. And the third one, he, I mean, he almost stopped. He, he's beaten three undefeated fighters in the last five years. Not a bad way to really put the finishing touches on your career because, you know, these are the last days of his career. You know, and I have, I have the utmost respect. And I, I love Pascal because he comes to fight and, and he's never in a boring fight. Now, as far as this goes with Meng, Meng, first, first pro loss. Meng was, most people don't know, but Meng actually is a highly ranked light heavyweight contender. So now that Pascal has a win over him, or win over him, that now begs the question of like, okay, will Pascal get a title shot? Because if you go through the rankings, right, Meng was ranked number nine in the WBC. Meng was also ranked, you see, he's not ranked in the WBA, but he's ranked number one in the IBF and he's ranked number eight in the WBO, so uh, ranked in three of the four governing bodies, ranked number one in the IBF. If we look at like the IBF, he's one, the WBC, he's what? Uh, he's nine. So the question now becomes okay, can Jean Pascal get a fight with a guy like Arthur Better Now we know Better Biev has a, a big fight schedule with Joe Smith Jr., we know that uh, you know Anthony Yard. Um, it's supposed it's supposedly do a fight with the winner of that fight, but now you got Pascal in the picture. So does Pascal maybe fight in a final eliminator with the WB or the, the, the um the IBF, or uh, does does the IBF actually mandate him as a challenger because he he just beat the number one ranked contender. Pascal ain't ranked in any one of these four governing bodies, and he just beat the number one ranked guy coming off a two and a half year layoff. That's that's a great win. That is a great win. And I'm gonna say this. Look. I know Pascal is 39 years old, and I, I, if I was his manager, I would never advise that he fight Arthur Better Be because I think that would be bad for his uh, career, but and maybe his health. But Pascal ain't no bitch, never has been, never will be. And Pascal is someone that I think if he would fight Better Be in Canada, that fight would do big business. You guys must understand, Jean Pascal is a guy that when he was in his prime, when he fought Lucien Boutet all those years ago, it was the biggest fight in Canada since Leonard versus um, Duran number one. You know, they sold out the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where the Montreal Canadiens play. So he is an attraction in Canada. Better be obviously is, is, is an attraction in his own right to a degree in Canada. I think that fight be a, makes a lot of business sense. And, you know, it's not like he hasn't earned it. You know, he's now positioned himself to do it. So whether it's against Better Biev or someone else, you know, Jean Pascal, I think, with the way he's been fighting these last five years, there's just no way. I, I, unless he retires, I don't see any way he doesn't get a, he doesn't get some sort of uh, world title shot or some sort of big fight because he he he's knocking out these undefeated guys like El Ali and Brown and now you know uh, uh, Meng Long Fang. So you know he's forcing his, he's forcing the world's hand. Take notice, take notice of the warrior from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Stop sleeping on my boy Jean Pascal. He did it again. A great performance today from him, reminding the world once again why he's still one of the better light heavyweights out there. I told you guys in the beginning of 2022, the light heavyweight division is making a big comeback. Add this fight, add this performance to the list of uh, you know great things happening in that light heavyweight division. So I'm going to leave it at that. Jean Pascal beats his third undefeated fighter in five years and beats the number one IBF rank contender, Meng Long Feng, to really, really make the back half of his career very interesting. So... Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding from Daniel. So until next time.
Take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content, interviews, news videos, breakdowns, live fight reaction extravaganza. We've got a great community of, of people here boxing fans all over the world from america to the uk to australia and on and on and on so join the empire today hit that subscribe button take care and god